The Fates, also known as Moirai, are a trio of weaving goddesses that assign mankind their fates at birth. Clotho, the Spinner, Lachesis, the Allotter, and Atropos, the Inflexible, are their names. They were originally described as Nyx's daughters, but later myths depicted them as the offspring of Zeus and Themis. Their mother was a Nangi, or necessity, according to Orphic mythology. In any case, they wielded great power, and even Zeus couldn't recall their decisions. If you want to know more about three sisters of fate from Greek mythology, who they are, and what role they play, then stay tuned till the end of the video. Who were the Fates? Fate, Greek Moira, plural Moirai, are three goddesses in Greek and Roman mythology who decided human destiny, particularly the length of a person's life and his share of pain and suffering. Homer refers to Fate, Moira, as an impersonal power in the singular, and compares its functions to those of the Olympian gods at times. The Fates, however, were personified as three very old women who spun the threads of human destiny from the time of the poet Hesiod, 8th century BC, onward. Clotho, the Spinner, Lachesis, the Allotter, and Atropos, the Inflexible, were their names, as previously stated. Clotho spun the thread of human fate, Lachesis distributed it, and Atropos cut it, thereby deciding the individual's death time. Depending on the media, they are described as either lovely women or elderly and ugly hags. The ugly and old imagery is frequently used in visual arts, but the ugly and ancient imagery is frequently used in literature. The three Greek fates were recognized by the Romans as the Parsi, who were originally personifications of childbirth. Nona, Decuma, and Morta were the names of the three Roman goddesses. Fate's Family at least three alternative genealogies exist for the Fates, two of which date back to Hesiod. The Fates are the fatherless daughters of Nyx, the Knight, according to the poet's Theogony, although they are later described as daughters of Zeus and Themis, and thus sisters of the Horae, Eunomia, Dyke, and Irene. Both genealogies make sense. The Moirai are tied to death through Nyx in the first case, and they are plainly associated with the unchanging order of things in the second. In the Orphic cosmogony, the Fates were given a new mother at a later time, Anangi, or Necessity. Fates' Function, Portrayal, and Symbolism Each of the three Fates, who were always depicted as three women spinners, had a different task, which was disclosed by her name. Clotho spun the threads of Fate, Lachesis measured its length, and Atropos, with her shears, cut it off. Each of the Fates was sometimes ascribed a certain time period, Atropos was assigned to the past, Clotho to the present, and Lachesis to the future. The Fates' depiction developed over time, and it appears that it was often influenced by the medium in which they were depicted. As a result, they are frequently depicted as attractive women in the visual arts, yet as old and ugly women in literature. They are usually depicted as weaving or tying thread in any case. Sometimes one or all of them can be seen reading or writing the Book of Fate. Relationship with Zeus Zeus Powerless, Sarpedon and Hector It's difficult to say whether Zeus had any say in the Fates' affairs, but according to the ancient Greeks, even he couldn't overturn their decrees. As a result, even though Zeus is aware that his beloved son Sarpedon would perish at the hands of Patroclus at one point during the Trojan War, he is unable to save him. Similarly, before the combat between Hector and Achilles, the all-powerful god simply weighs their fates on his golden scales and learns the outcome, rather than having any control over it. The Fates Helping Zeus The Giants and Typhon However, the Fates and Zeus appear to understand each other at all times, their friendship dating back to the Gigantomachy. During this time, the Fates clubbed the giant Agrius and Thoas to death with bronze cudgels. They aided Zeus even more when they fooled Typhoeus into eating some power-weakening fruits, which they persuaded him to do by convincing him of the reverse. The Fates in Particular Myths Elethia, the ancient Minoan goddess of childbirth and heavenly midwifery, was their companion as goddesses of birth who even predicted the fate of the freshly born. Pausanias recalls Alethea's ancient position as the skillful spinner, associating her with destiny. 
Their appearance reflects the Greek yearning for health, which was linked to the Greek cult of the body, which was primarily a religious activity. The Erinaeus, a group of vengeful Chthonic goddesses, functioned as the Moirai's instruments, exacting punishment for terrible deeds, particularly on those who wanted to avoid their proper destiny. The Moirai were sometimes confused with the Erinaeus and the death goddesses, the Kyres. The Moirai, despite their intimidating reputation, may be appeased as gods. In Athens, brides offered them locks of hair, and ladies swore by them. They may have begun as birth goddesses and only later gained a reputation as destiny's agents. According to the mythographer Apollodorus, the Moirai slew the giants Agrios and Thoas with their bronze clubs during the Gigantomachy, the conflict between the giants and the Olympians. Beleaguer. The three sisters of fate are thought to attend every child's birth for seven nights to determine how they will spin their life thread. In this narrative, they go to see a newborn named Meleager. The only time the fates spoke to a mortal was during Meleager's birth, when they told his mother Althea that her son would survive until a log blazing in the hearth was completely consumed by ashes. Althea, terrified by the sister's revelation, stashed the log somewhere safe. Meleager murdered his uncles in a tragic twist of fate during the Caledonian boar hunt, a fight over a boar skin and she threw the log into the fire, thus killing her son. Althea resolves to murder herself in remorse for killing her darling son in a moment of despair and regret. The Fates Tricked for Once Only once were the Fates duped, and that person was none other than Apollo. When Apollo learned that his beloved Admetus was about to die, he drank the Fates and persuaded them to spare Admetus' life if he could find a substitute. He didn't do it, but Admetus' wife, Alcestis, the pinnacle of devotion and love, stepped forward freely and ultimately saved her husband's life. Their temples. At least three temples dedicated to the fates have been discovered in ancient Corinth, Sparta, and Thebes. At the very least, statues of them might be found at Corinth's temple. Aside from temples, there were altars to the Moirai. Among them was the altar at Olympia near Zeus Moirigidi's altar, a connection to Zeus that was also reproduced in images of the Moirai in the Temple of Despina in Arcadia, as well as in Delphi, where they were represented alongside Zeus Moirigidi's, Guide of Fate, as well as Apollon Moirigidi's, Guide of Fate. On Corsaira, the Apollo Shrine, which was erected by Medea, was also a place where offerings were offered to the Moirai and the Nymphs. This was all about the Sisters of Fate, Greek mythology explained. What are your thoughts on it? Let us know in the comment box below. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest videos.